Hey everybody, welcome back. This should be part 20 of the X231 restoration series. I've got the boring bar tuned up and working well. The new redesigned feedworks is functioning as intended, so I'm ready to start making some chips and hopefully finish up the milling process on the repaired portion of this rear end. Okay guys, real quick first, these are all the tools that are going to be uh, removing the material in the end of the boring bar. So we're going to start with a regular quarter inch drill bit, put it in the chuck on the end of the bar, and drill in to a predetermined depth. Okay, next up, we're going to use this uh, end mill, and it's got this removable quarter inch diameter mandrel that's going to utilize that quarter inch hole that we just drilled with the bit. That mandrel is going to keep the cutter steady until I can get a good bore established that goes all the way around the circumference of the cutter, which will stabilize it. At that point, I can take the mandrel out and finish facing in to make my initial one inch diameter hole. Now that the initial one inch diameter hole is finished, I can transition to using these uh, various sized fly cutters. And what they're going to do is basically auger material out from around that one inch diameter hole, making it larger and larger until I've created a nice flat face across that area that I'm trying to mill. Okay guys, a little bit of a break in the action here. I've shut the bar off to kind of uh, have a better look at what I've been doing here. Quite a lot of that material has been removed from the face. I'm happy with how it's been turning out and the fly cutter's been working pretty well. Uh, we're getting kind of out to a large diameter now and uh, the cutter bit's rather unsupported because so much of it is sticking out of the holder. Um, I got a couple areas here that are causing me a little bit of concern because they're so thin. We got this bottom portion of this corner here, a very thin segment down here at the base, and kind of a sharp thin corner starting here where the bit comes around. And uh, when things start getting this thin, I start getting worried about the bit grabbing that material and pulling it in, possibly binding the bit, and uh, just either breaking equipment or, worst case scenario, breaking this repaired section of the case. So I think I'm going to switch to some uh, manual power now and do some uh, hand grinding on some of these areas here. Get rid of some of those thin spots and then we'll reevaluate where we want to go from there. So with that I should have all those high thin spots removed. Take a look through the opening over here. Shouldn't be anything left there that the cutter bit's going to grab and try and pull in. So, got a new uh, cutter fixtured into the bar. Time to fire this back up again and remove some more of this material. Well, I'm at the point now where I've got enough material removed in here that I need to. Uh, get this uh, bracket off the back of the case here and out of the way so I can put the belt pulley drive in there start checking what my clearances are. So here I have the belt pulley on top of the case. I've had this um, positioned in here once already checking my clearances and I found that I still have quite a lot of material left to remove but to make life easier I did this uh, cardboard cutout that replicates all the critical dimensions of the belt pulley from the face of this gasket surface on out to the gear. So this is going to make life a lot easier to use this kind of as a gauge to stick in there and check my progress. I'll give you a view of the inside real quick. Uh, you can see I've got most of the critical areas machined. I was mainly worried about this rear portion around the bottom and then up this front edge. There's still quite a lot of material up here that has to be removed. You can see up at the top radius here we're cutting in just about 5 eighths of an inch 
from the face of the new material on into where we've been uh, stopping with the cutter bit. And since I've got the critical areas pretty well machined already, I still need to take some of this out up here, but I can get in there with the grinder again, and it's probably best that I'll do this manually. So that's what I'm going to do next. Well, I decided to do most of the grinding off camera. I didn't figure you guys wanted to watch that anyhow. Give you a shot in here real quick. You can see I got most of that excessive upper portion out of the way, so that's good. And this is what my process is going to be. Taking my uh, gauge here, sticking it in there, and checking where the contact is going to be. And just uh, using that to determine where all I need to take material out and how far I want to go. As you can see here, we're still quite a ways out from the case, so just do this little at a time. Try and sneak up on it rather than taking way too much out and regretting it later. Okay, I've been milling in this for a while now, so it's time to stop. Just kind of give you a little bit of an idea of what I'm doing now. Um, this point, I'm working on this 45 degree angle here that's on the inside profile of that belt pulley drive gear. So this is the angle that I'm trying to uh, cut in for relief right now. And it's going to be a trick for me to get the camera down here so you get a decent view. You can see I've been uh, taking quite a bit out. The bit's kind of at a profound angle right now. And I've just been dressing the last of the cut up by hand here. I don't even have the motor on. Just sneaking up on it. So I really don't want to have the bit start grabbing and pulling material now, so we're getting there, little by little. Well, I think it's about time to do a test fit. As you can see, I've got the live power shaft with the PTO clutch just loosely placed in here for now. I have my cardboard gauge placed in. You can see I got some clearance there between the gauge and the case. So I'm not quite where I need to be, but it's uh, fitting the gauge pretty well where I have everything milled out for relief. And now I'd love to be able to stop right here and still keep a nice uh, thick sidewall. Unfortunately, for as far out as I am here yet, I know that's not gonna be possible, but still, I'm gonna get the PTO shaft with the clutch uh, installed in place loosely get the belt pulley drive in the side, and we'll just see where we're at for gear mesh. And get the belt pulley housing in as far as it'll go, about a quarter inch out yet, which I knew it would be. We'll take a look at how the gears are coming together, and just barely. Still have a long, long ways to go. Reposition here a little bit. You can see the tips are just barely meshing now. Not even close to doable, so we're gonna have to take out some more. Well, after the second round of machining, I think I'm finally where I need to be. I'm pretty confident with it, so I've got the live power shaft with the clutch in here ready to install to do another test fit. Let's have a good look at how everything turned out. Um, I had to come in just about into the edge of the counter bore here, um, but the way the 45 degree uh, uh, slope here cones out and increases my wall thickness, this really shouldn't be a problem. We'll take a look in through the back of the case, get a little different view. You can see I've still got a good quarter inch wall thickness there. So that's a little less deceiving without that counter bore on the front to look past to see how much material I still have left. So all in all, I am pretty happy with it. Okay, moment of truth. Slide the belt pulley housing in, and we're only about a sixteenth of an inch out away from the case. Plenty doable there, and that's a lot farther in than I thought I'd have it. We'll see what the gears look like. And actually, they're together pretty well. Try to give you an idea of what backlash is. Not bad at all. Tell you what guys, I really, really like that. Way better than I thought it'd be. And now I'll just do a couple quick comparisons between what the prototype housing looks like 
and then uh, compare that to the production. So we can see the whole uh, face profile here and how we got the 45 that domes out to give us increased wall thickness. And to compare that with the production case, you can see we have much the same profile down here on the bottom. We have a little bit wider face right here, and that's because this does not have that counter bore for a thrust washer like the uh, prototype one does. But all in all, very similar face profile, and we got the same 45 degree bevel that cones out to give us the increased wall thickness now, instead of where that old uh, prototype casting was just ground flush before, causing it to be too weak. So I was able to mimic that uh, rather accurately, I think. Next we'll take a look in through the side of the prototype case. You can see where I was able to machine out, make clearance for the gear. I think it machined up rather well. Nice smooth surface, reflects the light rather nicely. Plenty of room for that gear. And compare that looking in through the hole in the side of the production case. A uh, little bit rougher appearance due to the cast iron surface and uh, minimal machining marks in here. But we essentially uh, accomplished the same profile. So with that, the machining is done. Uh, really happy to have this uh, phase completed. It's been an incredible amount of work getting to this point, uh, building the tools and the machines that I needed to do this, um, rebuilding, redesigning, solving problems as they popped up. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out and pretty proud of the job that was done. So um, guys, as always, I thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, you know the whole deal. I've said it a lot of times already. Um, it's late, I'm tired gonna call it a night, but hope to see you back again next time.